Tonight, Congressman Jim Clyburn of South Carolina, a pivotal ally to the president, offered his support for federal judge Michelle Childs as a potential Supreme Court nominee. According to our own Mike Memoli, Congressman Clyburn said he thinks Biden's pledge to nominate a black woman to the Supreme Court more than his own endorsement was what catapulted him to the Democratic nomination in 2020. Joining us tonight is Democratic Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez of New York. Uh, Congresswoman, good evening. Thanks for joining me on the show this evening. You were one of those progressives last year. You were one of those progressives last year who said Justice Breyer should probably retire sooner rather than later. So I'm assuming you are very pleased to hear this news today. Do you think the pressure on him worked, helped him make that decision? I do. You know, well, you know, there's there's no way of actually saying what is in Justice Breyer's mind. But I do believe that the urgency of this moment, the fact that the country is very clearly on a precipice of fascism and a return to Jim Crow, uh, the sweeping attack on voting rights in this country and the very real threat that we have of seeing what happened, for example, with um, with Ruth, the consequences of Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, passing during the yes. Trump presidency, that we could very well risk something like that happening again. And uh, if that was part of his calculation, I think he was correct in, in his conclusion. Yeah. Yes, he did dodge uh, the outcome of whatever happened with Ruth Bader Ginsburg not retiring earlier. Um, and do you have a favorite pick yourself, a black woman judge who Biden should appoint? Jim Clyburn says Judge Michelle Childs. A lot of progressives, as well as the attorney general from your state of New York, Tish James, have suggested Sherilyn Eiffel, former head of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Well, you know, thankfully, there is no shortage of profound intelligent, accomplished, and just, you know, genius, frankly, legal genius that we have of, of Black women uh, that would be more than, than suited to serve on the Supreme Court. I believe Cheryl Eiffel is, uh, is a profound and, and wonderful candidate. I don't have a specific uh, name right now, but thankfully, we have a really strong bench of nominees. So it's funny that the GOP brought in a carve out from the filibuster for Supreme Court nominees that everyone's about to happily use, but two Democrats couldn't get on board with a filibuster carve out for voting rights just last week. And I wonder, do you think President Biden came too late to the fight on voting rights, was too late in coming out against the filibuster, that he should have led this fight much earlier and much more publicly? Yes, absolutely. He should have, um, I believe, that dragging... Uh, you know, dragging one's feet on this. Um, and this idea that, you know, I, I believe that the president was genuine and authentic in his assessment and believing that his decades in the United States Senate uh, and his relationships would be able to bring Manchin and, uh, and perhaps cinema along. I believe, you know, he was mistaken in that assessment. I believe that was a mistaken assessment in passing the Build Back Better Act and believing that we could pass that at the, before the end of the year. I think we need to play hardball. I think we need to go brass tacks. And I believe that very early in the presidency, uh, we had we don't have four years to make this presidency. We had had and have to. Um, and you know, I think that he should have gone stronger earlier, but he still has an opportunity to still go strong now, because I do believe that he's leaving some leverage on the table, uh, both with our, his legislative facing strategy in the Senate, but also in his leaning on executive actions. Uh, there is a great deal that needs yes. to be done that he can do with the stroke of his pen that he is not doing. And in order to, to really ensure that we are generating progress for working people, protecting the vote, the right to vote, protecting the marginalized, protecting our environment and standing up to corrupt interests, he needs to step up and do more, I believe, in, in his executive authority. Either that or he needs to ratchet it up on mansion and cinema. Do you agree with Bernie Sanders that now may be the time for Senator Kirsten Cinema, who blocked voting rights from passing last week, to face a primary challenge in Arizona come 2024? Well, Mehdi, um, as you mentioned, that race is in 2024, and that means Kirsten Cinema is about, you know, four years into his, her six-year term. I don't believe she's really given a 
compelling case as to why she should be renominated as the Democratic nominee for United States Senate in Arizona. Uh, I she has proven herself an obstacle to the right to vote to the United in the United States. She is not an ally on civil rights. Uh, it is becoming a precipice and rather um, contributing to the threat that we have in stabilizing our democracy. She is not standing up to corporate interests. In fact, she is a profound ally to them. And I believe that, uh, you know, she is not doing what voters in Arizona sent her to do. So I, so I for Ruben Gallego, believe- If a Ruben Gallego challenged her in a primary or someone else, you would potentially consider supporting a primary challenger? I mean, if it came down to someone like Ruben Gallego and Kirsten Cinema, I think that would be the easiest decision I would ever have to make. <laughs> there is no, uh, there is no comparison. This is a state that deserves to be represented by a strong Democrat that is allied with working families and understands okay. that we need to protect the rights of the marginalized. Uh, that understands that now is not the moment to stick up for corporations, but rather it's time to stand up for working people. And we need someone okay. that it has more allegiance to the actual people of this country than special interests. Okay, well, last question before we take a break, and we're going to carry this conversation on. But I have to ask, apart from all the domestic fights that are going on, there's a big actual mm-hmm. real fight, a war possibly about to happen in Europe. How concerned are you about what's happening in Ukraine? How worried are you about a full-scale war involving the US? And do you think Biden has handled this crisis well so far? Badly? Okay. What's your grade? Well, you know, I'm quite concerned about some of the dynamics here. One of them, frankly, is that you have a entire military industrial complex outside of the U.S. military, but, you know, part of this this complex of contractors uh, that, frankly, just left Afghanistan and are starved for revenue. And I'm very concerned about the urgency of this situation um, really becoming and materializing into a situation that could be exploited by for-profit military interests. Now, what is happening between Russia and Ukraine is of profound concern. And the Biden administration is well within their right to seek a diplomatic uh, resolution to this issue, uh, one that does not hurt the Ukrainian people, but uh, allows them to exercise their their right to self-determination and to continue to be a self-determined nation. And so, uh, so I believe that the Biden administration is well within their right to uh, to counter Russia's aggression diplomatically, but there is not a military solution to this problem. And in fact, uh, on top of that, there is great concern. Fareed Zakaria made an excellent point in the Washington Post that there is also oil pipelines here at play, and um, and the potential design and entertainment of certain sanctions could precipitate an energy crisis. And so we cannot ignore the role of of fossil fuels and, frankly, climate change and the great need for energy transition, the contributions that those are making to the present situation.